for Long Island. Dwayne Bacon, who we mentioned, Matt, in the starting lineup for Greensboro, along with Kobe Simmons, Terry Henderson, Thomas Welsh, and Ray Spaulding is just an outstanding rendition of the national <laughs> anthem by a girl who can't be more than four or five years old here at the Coliseum. That's why we came on the air so quietly. What a terrific job. Uh, I believe her name was Caitlin, they said on the uh, public address. Uh, did an outstanding job here with the national anthem here at the Coliseum. Sean Fine and the Long Island Nets coming in winners of five of their last seven games. Matt coming off that win as you talked about on Friday in Lakeland, Joe Wolf trying to keep these Greensboro swarm afloat. They have really struggled here in February, one and six. And you can see a smile, Kevin, on everybody's face, yeah. including Joe Wolf, the head coach of these Greensboro swarm as he walks over to shake hands with the officials. Everybody fired up by that national anthem by a young Caitlin there who's a member, a member of the dance team that's gonna yeah. perform at halftime. And <clears throat> she came out and did just a wonderful rendition of, of the national anthem and even Justin Anderson who is uh, back from his stint with Team USA, which we'll talk about plenty. He came over and gave a hand to young Caitlin there, a great national anthem. Now, all that said, Kevin, we're anticipating a great game here tonight, especially given the way that the Long Island Nets have played on that six-game road trip that they are just back from now, that long and winding road, first game for the Nets at home since January 29th. Now, of course, that game was at Barclays Center, so even more since we've been here at NYCB Live. Four and two, like we mentioned, on that six game road trip, a perfect 4 0 against the Eastern Conference. The two losses coming against Sioux Falls and Oklahoma City. Uh, two games that Sean Fine said the Sioux Falls games, uh, Sioux Falls game he felt was a winnable game and he was disappointed in the way that one turned out. And then the Oklahoma City game, that was the last game before the All Star break, and he admitted his guys were just gassed from the long road trip. They didn't have it from the start, they couldn't get back in that game. So that one is just one of those that. The coaching staff is content to just throw out the window there, but the points per game has been there. A lot has been there for Long Island, a lot to like during this four and two road trip and exactly what they needed on a tough road trip. They're a long road trip, a month away from home, get themselves back potentially into the playoff picture here and a chance to make a run. Well, Dwayne Bacon, we talked about him at the top, has been incredible for the Greensboro Swarm since coming down on assignment from the Charlotte Hornets. 51 points against Fort Wayne in his G League season debut back on the 19th. The two games since then, a ho-hum 44 and 40 <laughs> points. That 51-point game, the only 50-point game in the G League this season. And he's been a contributor at the NBA level with Charlotte. This is his third year out of Florida State. And boy, is he really showing that oozing potential that he has potentially at the NBA level here in the G League in the last week or so. Well, the story goes for Dwayne Bacon. He started the first 10 games of the year with the Charlotte Hornets, then sort of fell out of favor, fell out of the rotation for whatever reason. A lot of guys kind of coming along, younger players kind of took his spot. And Dwayne Bacon, about a month ago, went to general manager Buzz Peterson and said, I want to go to Greensboro. I want to go to the G League just to find the rhythm again in my game because obviously he wasn't playing a lot, wasn't getting a lot of game live reps. A month ago, Buzz Peterson told him, no, you're staying in the NBA, and that's that. Dwayne Bacon was amenable to that. But then after another month of really not getting a lot of action, he went back to Peterson and said, I want to go back to Greensboro. And he said, you know what? If you want to, go ahead, see how it turns out. And so far, it's been nothing short of phenomenal. Like you said, two 40-point games and a 51-point game, 45 points per game over his three with the Greensboro Swarm. Only one of them, though, a win. Yeah. As this Greensboro team... Uh, has been you know, depleted, which we see a lot in the G League. They've lost a ton of really good players to the NBA, which of course is the whole point of the G League here. But Dwayne Bacon, who is now walking right in front of our little broadcast perch right here, looking like he's ready to go as we're about to tip this thing off. A guy who is certainly a marked man wearing that number zero jersey in gray for the Greensboro Swarm. Greensboro just lost Joe Cheely to the Hornets on a 10-day contract a couple of days ago. Cheely out of the College of Charleston. Was on a two-way deal with them last season and now in the G League to start off this year before getting that 10-day from the Charlotte Hornets. Matt, you mentioned it. Justin Anderson is back tonight for Long Island. He was on the uh, World Cup qualifying team for Team USA the last week or so. Played a couple of games in Team USA's two wins over Puerto Rico. And Sean Fine told us before the game, he got a text from Justin Anderson early in the morning 
couple of days ago saying that he wanted to play here on Monday night and that, quote, I want bacon. <laughs> and he wants to guard Dwayne Bacon and, and test himself out against, as we talked about, one of the guys playing the best basketball in the entire G League here the last week or so. Yeah, and Sean Fine said that text came at 1.30 in the morning and he saw it bleary-eyed where Justin Anderson said, I want bacon overnight. <laughs> he didn't quite understand what that meant until he woke up at around 7.30, reread the text and said, oh, that makes sense. So, yeah, Justin Anderson definitely letting everybody know that even though he played yesterday for Team USA, played 22 minutes in that win over Puerto Rico, wanted to be out here on the floor tonight, wanted to start, wants the assignment to take on Dwayne Bacon. Matt Myers, Simone Jelks, J.D. Rawls are three officials. Long Island in the home blues, Greensboro in the road gray uniforms trimmed in the teal and purple. I have to love those old school Charlotte Hornets colors on these Greensboro uniforms. And Jeremiah Martin starting out with it here for Long Island. John and Musa down the left side lays it in. Long Island on the board first. Matt, tonight's keys to the game are driven by Ford. Well, we talked about rebounds in the open. Kevin, the Nets setting that franchise record with 72 on Friday at Lakeland. Greensboro doesn't rebound all that well, so perhaps a repeat performance out of the Nets. You got Mr. 50, the Nets must contain that guy right there, Dwayne Bacon, averaging those 45 in the last three games, 51 in his debut. And also assignment, the Nets flush with assignment players tonight, John and Musa, Rodion's Kurutz, Nick Claxton, but it doesn't always equate to success. We'll see if the Nets can turn the tide with a fully loaded lineup here tonight. Well, Sean Fine told us before the game, that is the most challenging part of his job when you have these three guys coming here on assignment. How does he make sure he manages the minutes getting them what they need for the NBA club, but also getting the guys who've been here the entire season on their G League contracts the type of run they need to stay sharp. We'll see how he plays that as this game goes on. Anderson, a corner three, and a quick 7-0 spurt to open things up for Long Island. But in our pregame conversation with Sean Fine, we all agreed that is a nice problem to oh, have, Oh, yes, right? for sure. <laughs> Well, nice problem to start. John and Musa, a couple of buckets. Justin Anderson, a corner three. And just a minute, 15 seconds in, it is seven, nothing Nets. Seven nothing run for Long Island to open things up here at the Coliseum in just a minute 15 in. They've built a big lead over the Greensboro Swarm. Dwayne Bacon has taken a couple of early shots here for the Swarm coming off a 40 point game in his last outing. Again, is averaging 45 in his three games on assignment here in the G League for Joe Wolf. Bacon and Kobe Simmons, the point guard for the Swarm shoot about 70% of the shots on this team the last couple of games. We'll see a whole lot of those two guys. As Martin around the screen from Kasababu, Jeremiah Martin in the lane draws a foul and Martin will go to the line to shoot one for two. First and only meeting between these teams back on January 11th. It was in Greensboro, a game that the Nets one by 10, but it was marked by a phenomenal first quarter by Greensboro, the Swarm scoring 40 points in that first quarter, their best first quarter by far this season. They led the Nets by 14 after the first, a game that the Nets eventually rallied and came back and won, but so far, the hot start for Long Island. Simmons inside, finishing over Casababu in the Swarm on the board.
Justin Anderson. Foul here called on Bacon. Grabbed a hold of Jonathan Casababu. Casababu, one of the key guys in Long Island's last game, a win over Lakeland on Friday in their first game back from the All-Star break. And Matt, you mentioned it earlier, 72 rebounds, a franchise record for Long Island in that win, just dominating the magic on the glass. Casababu played a big role in that, as he usually does when Long Island rebounds well. Martin, step back three off the mark. And we wanted to know from the coaching staff, was there anything in particular that led to such an amazing performance on the glass? Again, franchise record, 72 in that game. And Sean Fine told us really nothing in the game plan was you know, designed specifically to do so well on the rebounding glass. It was just that coach sensed a tenacity, a uh, peak in effort that night on the road at Lakeland. And you could just kind of sense that something special was going to happen. And very much looking for a repeat of that here tonight against Greensboro. Now, Lakeland is a team that right now, with the playoffs were to start today, they're in the playoffs. And again, talking about Greensboro, worst team in the G League, tied with Northern, Ar uh, Northern Arizona, 8-29 and 29 record on the season. So a great opportunity here for the Nets to rattle off another victory if they can keep that intensity where Coach Fine wants it to be. Turned over by Kuroots inside Spalding over Kasababu, can't finish. Offensive rebound for Bacon, back up and converts. So seven in a row for the Nets. Timeout Greensboro, now a 6-0 run to answer here for the Swarm. Justin Anderson, mismatch here on Welsh, kicks out for Kasababu. Jonathan Kasababu will drive it hard take but can't finish. Down with it is Henderson, whips it up ahead for Bacon. Out to Simmons for three. Kobe Simmons knocks it down. A 9-0 run for Greensboro, and they have their first lead. Since Dwayne Bacon joined, or joined up again with this Greensboro team three games ago, it really has been, Kevin, a two-headed monster, and it's these guys right there, Dwayne Bacon and Kobe Simmons. Give you an example on Saturday, in their loss at home against Capital City, Bacon and Simmons took 50 of Greensboro's 89 total field goal attempts in that game. So more than half of the shot attempts by just those two players alone, Simmons and Bacon. 40 and 30 points on Saturday night for that duo. 70 points they scored combined. Anderson over Welsh for three. Justin Anderson has made a couple here in the opening quarter. Showing no ill effects of playing 22 minutes for Team USA yesterday in the FIBA Cup qualifiers. Martin at Simmons from behind, and he bowled over Jonathan Casababu there to Kobe Simmons. Some hard contact after the foul on Jeremiah Martin. Check out that collision right there. Casababu was setting up to take the charge, and he's going to take a seat as Nicholas Claxton will check in for the first time, the third assignment player from the Brooklyn Nets with Long Island here tonight. Coming off a game on Friday night is Claxton, 21 points, 12 rebounds off the bench. Led Long Island in scoring. Thomas Welsh for three is off the mark. Jeremiah Martin up top for C.J. Williams. Musa gets a screen from Claxton, kicks out for Anderson. Justin Anderson knifing inside, kicks out Williams, corner three, book it. I think you can argue, Kevin, that the Long Island Nets haven't put out a better five than they have on the floor right now. All five with NBA experience. Some with a lot, some with a little, but nonetheless, an NBA lineup out on the floor here for the Long Island Nets. Jeremiah Martin scoring his first NBA points with Brooklyn a couple of weeks ago. That happened in that gap since we've had a home game here at the Coliseum. <laughs> Martin has played two NBA games on his two-way deal with Brooklyn. Musa out for Martin. Jeremiah Martin through some contact. Nice finish. Went right at Ray Spaulding there and able to finish through him. Spaulding eyes up a three and knocks it down. Ray Spaulding out of Louisville, former second round pick of the Sixers. Played an NBA game with the Mavericks a year ago, and now on a two-way deal with Charlotte and Greensboro. And whistle on this one, and an offensive foul 
called on Claxton. Bacon bullies his way inside through Anderson. Justin Anderson did a, a bit of a somersault there defending Bacon. And Greensboro back in front by one. Yeah, it's Wayne Bacon, 6'6", 221, but compared to Justin Anderson, definitely the slider player, but you can see it's Wayne Bacon's ability to create space anywhere on the floor, sending Anderson flying about 15 feet on the court and he got himself an easy layup. And this is as premier of a matchup between uh, two guys you're gonna see in a G League game. Bacon and Anderson is Spalding inside, misses the jam, and Williams down with it for the Nets. Now two missed dunks for Greensboro here so far in the first quarter. Martin, kick out Anderson. Steps into another three and buries it. Three threes for Justin Anderson, Long Island, back in front by two. And Anderson chirping it up with the Greensboro bench. Loose ball, picked up by Martin and he's fouled by Simmons. Greensboro doing a good job crashing the offensive glass right there with Jeremiah, Jeremiah Martin. Tenacious defender, a good rebounder from the guard spot. Able to eventually corral that one before getting fouled. Devin Kennedy checks in for the first time for Long Island, replacing John and Musa. Martin inside looking for Claxton, had it poked away nicely by Joel Berry. Barry, the former North Carolina star, on a G League deal with the Swarm. Bacon inside, the Euro step floater won't go, gets his own rebound and taken away by Martin. Martin is fouled by Spalding. If you're Ray Spalding, not the foul you want to commit there on Jeremiah Martin, about 75 feet away from the basket. A technical foul has been called on Dwayne Bacon. So Kennedy to the line to shoot it for Long Island. And he'll connect. Jalen Hands in the game here, replacing Martin. Long Island will have possession. 5.04 to play opening quarter. Nets in front, 19-16. And while the Nets were away on that six-game road trip, Devin Kennedy's consecutive free throw streak was snapped. 28 in a row. He had one miss back on February 1st on the road at Westchester, but he has a new streak going. And after that free throw right there, Kennedy has now hit three in a row. CJ Williams, kick out Anderson. In the corner, hands an open three is short. Unselfish there from Justin Anderson. Getting that coveted open look in the corner for hands, just couldn't knock it down. Joel Berry right to the rim, a nice take from the former Tar Heel. Joel Berry hasn't played in Greensboro's last two games. Devin Kennedy has a mismatch here. He'll give it up for Hands. Hands driving on Berry. Kick out Williams. Another good look at a three off back iron. No. Long Island now four of eight from downtown. Welsh post position on Williams. Goes to the hook shot and can't convert. Sean Fine did tell us pregame that Greensboro will look to post a little bit more than some other teams you'll see as Kennedy gets an open look for three. Long Island getting plenty of open looks from long range. Five of nine so far from beyond the arc for the Nets. Barry has it poked away, but a foul on Devin Kennedy. That Kennedy didn't think he fouled. Joel Berry right there, but I saw him rake him across the arm. Kennedy booked for his first foul of the game. Tyler Nelson in the game for Greensboro as Welsh misses the mid-range jumper. Williams down the left side, off for Claxton, extra dribble, and he jams it. <laughs> Nicholas Claxton not going to miss from there. He feasted on Friday night in the game on the road against Lakeland. 
in the pick and roll in the lob game and right there getting himself a great pass from C.J. Williams and Nick Claxton doing what he does inside. Claxton again, the defense on Welsh. Anderson in transition, Justin Anderson. Timeout on the floor. Long Island has taken a six point lead, 2.55 to play in the first. Feels good to be back at home for the Long Island Nets. Six of their next seven games here at NYCB Live. As for the most recent six game road trip, head coach Sean Fine happy with a four and two outcome. A little disappointed with how we played in Sioux Falls. Um, you know, thought that was a winnable game for us. And then against OKC, last game of the road trip, right before the All-Star break, we just, we just didn't bring it. You know, four and two on the road trip, uh, pretty good for us. And now you know, we got to take care of business at home. Um, I think if we bring the intensity that we did against Lakeland on the road uh, a few days ago, that, that we'll be in good shape. That intensity against Lakeland was otherworldly. We talked about the 72 rebound performance for the Long Island Nets. And so far, showing plenty of signs of life here against the Greensboro Swarm. An eight point advantage for the Nets, but just under three minutes to go here in the first. Joel Berry, mid-range jumper out of the timeout. Berry has an early five points. And the Swarm within six here, 26-20, Long Island on top. Late in the opening quarter, Justin Anderson leading the way for the Nets with 11 points. He's on the bench right now, Nicholas Claxton driving on Welsh to the left hand. Another nice finish from Claxton. I had a chance to talk to Nick Claxton yesterday at practice and so much of our conversation focused on the just tremendous complement of skills he has as a big man. A pleasure to watch him on the inside, the footwork, the ability to run the floor, which he did on Friday night against Lakeland, starting a fast break that ended up in a C.J. Massenburg three-pointer. Guy's a lot of fun to watch, and certainly a guy that the Long Island front office is keeping close tabs on here, getting an opportunity to play a lot of minutes with the Long Island Nets. Claxton playing his fifth game on assignment here tonight has been in and out of the rotation with Brooklyn this season uh, as he'll take a seat on the bench here has had times where he's played significant minutes at the NBA level more recently he's been on the bench quite a bit at the NBA level so the NBA brass wanting him to get some extended playing time here in the G League has done that over the last little bit as a three-pointer knocked down by Dante Ingram last game for Nick Claxton with the Brooklyn Nets in the NBA back on January 26th, so it's been a while since he's seen any time with the Brooklyn team. Practiced Pass a lot with Long Island. Pass it Babu, the offensive rebound, but taken away by Berry. Joel Berry, a pull-up three, is short. Rebounded by John and Musa. Jalen Hands blowing by Odiasi and lays it in. Odiasi just for a second there peeked to the left and Jalen Hands, great instincts, sensed that and flew right by him for the wide open layup. A heady play there for the rookie out of UCLA. Kennedy commits a foul on Nelson on the jumper. Going to be the second on Devin Kennedy. 
and Tyler Nelson to the free throw line to shoot one for two. I'm guessing we got a couple of Fairfield stags watching this game here tonight because you got Tyler Nelson out of Fairfield in Connecticut, of course, all-time leading scorer at Fairfield with 2,172 points. And then you look there underneath on the block waiting to pull down a rebound for the Long Island X is Jonathan Casababu, of course, yeah. another proud son of Fairfield University. So both guys wearing number six. It's very easy to remember our alums of Fairfield University. So pretty cool moment here for the Stags. And they're not too far from Fairfield here on Long Island. Jalen Hands looking inside for Kasababu, who throws it down. <laughs> Throwing it down on top of his old teammate Tyler Nelson right there. Maybe a little joke over uh, text tonight about that one. I don't know. About a seven-second difference here between shot and game clock in the quarter. Josh Perkins taking it down for Greensboro. Perkins up top to Berry for three. Joel Berry can't knock it down. Odiasi the offensive board back up and converts. Tough finish from Tay Odiasi. Now John and Musa with three, a full head of steam to the rim, a wild shot won't go, and that'll do it for the quarter. A strong start for Long Island, but Greensboro fighting their way back into it. It is a five-point lead for the Nets. Justin Anderson leading the way. He's made three threes, 11 points. Nicholas Claxton getting in as well, and the Nets lead it by five as we head to the second. Throughout February, the NBA celebrates Black History Month by honoring those who paved the way for future generations. That tradi uh, tradition continues through league-wide efforts to bring people together and take action in our communities. Share how you are honoring Black History Month using hashtag BHM. Nets shooting the lights out in the first quarter, 62% from the field, 5 of 10 from 3, including Justin Anderson, who's a perfect 4 for 4, but it's only a 4-point lead. Nets have turned it over five times. Greensboro does a very good job protecting the ball. Only one turnover. Tay Odiasi providing a highlight to open up the second quarter. Off the lob from Joel Berry. And the swarm within three here, 32-29. Anderson, Musa, Hands, Kennedy, and Kasababu, the five for Long Island. Devin Kennedy bouncing down low for Kasababu. Now Kennedy around a screen, inside for Musa, nice feed. Musa the patience, and he finishes. John and Musa had to wait for a couple of swarm players to get out of his way there. 
He is up to six points. Odiasi and Berry joined by Ingram, Nelson, and Perkins for the Swarm. As Ingram misses the floater, Odiasi, the offensive board, won't go. Anderson whips one inside for Kasababu. Able to get control back. Now skip pass for Hands. Jalen Hands poked away by Perkins. Berry, kick out, Nelson, three in transition, rattles out, and Musa the rebound. Anderson bouncing in the corner. Hands will slow it down. Now we'll take it baseline. Musa through some contact, fouled by Odiasi. Greensboro hanging around here, start of the second quarter. Playing some good defense. Josh Perkins poking that ball away. It's about as loud of a steal as I've ever heard. John and Musa playing his sixth game on assignment this season. Of course, spent a ton of time here with Long Island a year ago. 36 games in the regular season plus Long Island's playoff run to the G League Finals. Three ball no good from Ingram. Kennedy up ahead for Anderson. We get a whistle and a foul on Berry. Neither Dwayne Bacon nor Kobe Simmons on the floor here for Greensboro, those two prolific scorers that they have. So an opportunity for Long Island to perhaps gain some separation against Greensboro. Anderson down the left side, another tough finish. Justin Anderson is up to 13. Maybe Justin Anderson knew something that Sean Fine and the coaching staff didn't know when he sent that text saying that he absolutely wants to play just a day after playing for Team USA yesterday in Washington, D.C. He is on fire so far here in the first half. Perkins is fouled by hands. And Josh Perkins will have one free throw for three points. Rodion Skuroots left the game early. Looked like he got hit in the face about three minutes in and had went back to the locker room, though he is getting uh, his left knee worked on there, it looks like. And he is back on the bench. We haven't seen him since. Skuroots, one rebound, took one shot in those first three minutes. Kuroot's playing his ninth game on assignment here with the Long Island Nets this season. And that's only, oh, that's only one in seven this season in games that Rodion's Kuroot's has played. So we talked about it in the opening where you love to have all these assignment players, all these NBA guys, if you're the Long Island Nets yeah. coaching staff or any team. But just because you got guys who've played a ton in the NBA doesn't necessarily automatically mean you roll out the ball and get yourself a W. See if Kuroots can come back here at some point the rest of the game here tonight. Musa leaves it short. And out of bounds, last off of Long Island. They have a nine point lead here, 38 29 early in the second. Justin Anderson and John and Musa have combined for 21 of Long Island's 38 points. Perkins pull up jumper off back iron, no good, and Kennedy down with the board. Kennedy, step back three over Nelson, too much on it. That's got not getting a ton going here in the half court set. A lot of passes around the perimeter having to settle for that step back three. Perkins throws one up and Odiasi there to clean it up. That was a little unconventional there from Josh Perkins. Just kind of threw it in the area over his head and Odiasi pulled it down and laid it back in. Odiasi having himself a nice start to this game. Six points, four rebounds. Anderson bouncing for Kasababu inside. Count it and one. 
talked about it earlier, Kasababu coming off one of his better games of the season, 15 points, 13 rebounds Friday night on the road at Lakeland. As he gets that head of steam towards the basket, best option is usually to clear out of the way. Jonathan Kasababu with that frame has little trouble finishing through contact. Kasababu misses the free throw. Stays a nine point Long Island lead. Perkins the lob for Odiasi and he's fouled by Kasababu. Odiasi has provided a couple of highlights here early in the second quarter showing off his leaping ability. The six foot nine second year man out of Illinois Chicago. That was about to be one of the better highlights we were potentially going to see as Odiasi had that one tracked all the way. Jonathan Casababu managed to shake it up a little bit there. I'm going to make out Odiasi earn it at the free throw line. Shoots at 53% on the season. And he makes one for two. Anderson pump fakes on a three. Instead, he'll drive it. Bowls over Odiasi. And the foul called on Tay Odiasi. Justin Anderson working on something special here, potentially for the Long Island Nets. 13 points in 13 minutes. A perfect 5 of 5 from the field. And the last time we saw Justin Anderson back when the Nets were on that road trip on the road at Oklahoma City when he scored. 48 points in a losing effort for Long Island. Misses the free throw. Only shot he's missed thus far tonight. Five of five from the floor and three of three from three point range. Well, of course, because I was singing his praises, so. Anderson gives it up to Anderson. Long Island has numbers here. Kennedy back out to Anderson. Whips one inside to Claxton. Pretty feed, pretty finish. And that's the attention that Justin Anderson can draw, particularly when he's playing like this. The defense collapsing on him above the arc, and Nick Claxton with the presence of mind to cut towards the hoop. A bullet pass and a dunk for Claxton. Another one getting the Long Island Nets a nine-point lead here. Seven and a half to go with the Coliseum. Homewood Suites by Hilton, Carl Place, Garden City, New York. Ideally located in Carl Place is four miles from NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, 17 miles from JFK and 18 miles from LaGuardia. If you forgot something, there is a 24-hour convenience store, complimentary Wi-Fi, a hot breakfast each morning, and complimentary evening social light fare, beer and wine, Monday to Thursday. It's all you need to make yourself at home. Nets enjoying their biggest lead of the game here, up by nine with... Just over seven minutes to go. Still shooting the ball well from the field, 63%. But leaving a couple of free throws on the board, just two of five from the charity stripe here so far in the first quarter, first half. Jeremiah Martin turning on the Jets. Kick out Kennedy, open corner three, swish. Great read there from Jeremiah Martin, a defensive breakdown for Greensboro as the C just kind of parted. Martin able to drive and 
kick. That's what Sean Fine and this team, uh, Long Island Nets coaching staff, always looking for. Get to the rim first. If they collapse, kick it out. And that's exactly how it worked, just how they drew it up to Devin Kennedy. And Perkins, the answer on the other end for Greensboro. That really is an, a, a microcosm of the new era of the NBA. Jeremiah <laughs> Martin had a chance to go up, was a bit contested there at the rim, so instead knows he's got a shooter waiting in the corner, and that is the better shot at that time. Devin Kennedy wide open, a guy who's an excellent shooter from downtown. It's going to take some time to get used to it for some old basketball fogies like you and I, Kevin, right? When you got maybe like a three-on-one or a four-on-two and you have an open layup and then you kick it out for the three-pointer in transition, it just seems to rub you the wrong way. Everything goes against everything we've been taught as basketball players, but you're right. I mean, that's the better shot. The analytics guys will tell you, take that open three anytime you can get it. And that's what we see a lot of, thankfully, for Long Island. It happened to work out right there. And Devin Kennedy has now made two in a row. He's up to 10 points off the bench as Thomas Welsh gets it to go at the rim for Greensboro. It is a 10-point game, 48-38, Long Island on top. There's Martin taking it to the rim himself that time. Defense! Defense! Jeremiah Martin came in Defense! when he signed that two-way contract with Brooklyn. Cutting through the lane, Terry Henderson. The reputation as a defensive specialist, but Jeremiah Martin averaging 18 points. He's been a reliable scorer here for the Long Island Nets. Obviously rewarded with a couple, a couple games, two games with the Brooklyn Nets over the extended road trip. Down to four for John and Musa. Knifes his way inside for two. A little unconventional there from John and Musa, but he made it work, and he is into double figures. Pace picking up here in the corner. Ingram, too much on a three. Bacon the offensive board. Dwayne Bacon is fouled by Anderson. I feel like we should be on permanent Bacon watch here. So far at this point in the second quarter, about midway through the second, Dwayne Bacon only four points. And if you're Long Island Nets, you got to consider that a win here in the early going. A 12-point lead, and a lot of it having to do with John and Musa getting buckets and that defensive effort on the star, Dwayne Bacon, for Greensboro. During the road trip, the Long Island Nets Kids Dance Team got a unique chance to visit the African American Museum of Nassau County. It's a feature story you'll see today at halftime. What they're getting ready to enter and see is different possibilities, different dreams, different legacies, different heroes on the wall. And I want to instill that in the young people that their dreams and their goals and possibilities is all that they have. And now they can achieve anything when they look at Malcolm X, when they look at Martin Luther King, when they look at the Rosa Parks. Two months ago, the kids dance team got to visit the Cradle of Aviation Museum, not far from us here at NYCB Live. And again, last week they were at the African American Museum of Nassau County. Great opportunity for the kids to learn about the role that African American history played here in Nassau County. Visits from Dr. Martin Luther King, who I didn't even know this, Kevin. Maybe you do as a Hofstra graduate. Dr. King has an honorary degree from Hofstra I University. Did know that. Spoke yep. on campus at Hempstead, so pretty cool for the kids to get that uh, experience. It's something you'll see at halftime, put that story together. 
Rodion's Kuroots back in the game and knocking down a three. Long Island has been red hot from downtown. They've made eight of 14 threes, and their lead now at 13. Kuroots, the assignment of guarding Dwayne Bacon here. Step back three over the top of him, won't go. And Bacon, just two of 10 from the floor now. He's got only six points. I chatted with some of the members of the coaching staff at practice yesterday, and I wanted to know what they thought about containing Dwayne Bacon, again, a guy who's averaging 45 points in his three G League games this season. And they felt confident that they had the horses, they had the guys that could defend Dwayne Bacon, particularly guys with length like Rodion's Kuruch, Justin Anderson, and John and Musa. So the Nets coaching staff feeling confident that they can hang with a guy like Dwayne Bacon, who is quite the prolific scorer here at the G League level so far this season. Kuroot signs up another three, leaves it short, and a foul on the floor. Looks like it'll be on Ingram, as he grabbed a hold of Nicholas Claxton, who was going after that rebound. Well, they get actually Thomas Welsh for it. Fifth team foul on the Swarm, so Claxton at the line to shoot one for two. And he converts. Claxton up to eight points. That was his first free throw of the game. Also five rebounds. Again, he led the Nets on Friday night. 20 points off of the bench. Dante Ingram looking inside for Welsh. The lefty hook won't go, and Claxton another rebound. Nicholas Claxton up to six boards as well. He'll take it himself right at Welsh and finishes. Claxton definitely getting the better of that matchup against Thomas Welsh. Welsh just two of nine from the field. Meanwhile, Nick Claxton a perfect four of four. Along with Justin Anderson, neither Claxton nor Anderson has missed tonight. Nine for nine combined from the field for Long Island's two premier players. That is the potential that Brooklyn loves about Nicholas Claxton. Now Massenberg will lob one for him, and he throws it down. Claxton rewarded for running the floor. You could just see C.J. Massenberg waiting for that ball to come down because he knew he had a perfect lob opportunity for Nicholas Claxton. And once again, exactly what this Brooklyn organization has in mind with a guy like Nicholas Claxton who can do a little bit of everything on the floor. A highlight reel couple of minutes if you're a Brooklyn Nets fan and you want to see what Nicholas Claxton may become here in a couple of seasons. Did it on the defensive end with the rebound, taking it coast to coast himself and laying it in and then after Long Island got the stop, getting out in transition and catching the lob from Massenburg. 12 points in 12 minutes for Claxton. Again, six rebounds. Another impressive start here for the rookie out of Georgia. More strong defense from Jeremiah Martin. Now C.J. Massenburg finds Kuroots for another three. This one off the mark, but Kasababu, Johnny on the spot, and he lays it in. Rodion's Kuroots with back-to-back -back airballed three-pointers. Kevin, we were watching him in pregame shooting from three, and it just seemed like he was off in the early going. You know, you don't try not to make too much of what's going on in the pregame, but definitely frustrated with his stroke. And so far here tonight, you can see back-to-back -back airballs there from long range from Rodi, a guy who shot it so well at the NBA level, but here in his eight games with Long Island, just 20% from three coming into tonight's game. So kind of don't know how to make heads or tails out of what's yeah. going on with Rodion's Kuroots from, from long range, but failed out by Jonathan Kasababu, of it's, course. It's definitely a tough situation to get a read on because he is shooting 46% from three in the NBA this year, an outrageous number. Granted, that is a small sample size, so is this here in the G League. Is another look at Dwayne Bacon as he was fouled by Kasababu and count the bucket for Bacon. Um, but Kuroot certainly struggling here at the G League level at least, shooting the three. Just one of four thus far tonight. It is a 19 point Long Island lead, 63-44. Jeremiah Martin adding to it. At least on the offensive end, Long Island having little trouble getting what they want. A 13 to two run for the Nets. Outscoring Greensboro 33-17 here in the second quarter. Bacon is fouled by Martin. Jeremiah Martin and Kasababu both there on the drive from Dwayne Bacon. Third personal will be on, check that, just the second personal on Jeremiah Martin. Got ahead of myself there.
but he will take a seat. Jalen hands back in here for the final 113 as Bacon makes the free throw. Bacon starting to get his a little bit up to 10 points, but it has been hard fought for him. Just three of 11 from the field. 0 for three from three. He has made two free throws. Dwayne Bacon off the window. Bacon starting to heat up here late in the second quarter. Sounds delicious. The puns are certainly easy to come by. <laughs> That's the only one. I'll resist the rest of the night, I'm sorry. Did hear a couple of young kids behind us screaming bacon, <laughs> undoubtedly because they saw the last name on his jersey as he came out. That was early on in the game as Long Island turns it over. Their eighth turnover of the game, and Greensboro has just two turnovers here despite trailing it by 17 points. They've done a nice job taking care of the basketball. Long Island, though, still has been able to take control here late in this first half. About a 10 second difference between shot and game clock. Kobe Simmons gives it up to hands and Long Island will hold for the final shot of the half. Offensive foul called on Kasababu. He was battling for position there with Kobe Simmons. Second on Kasababu, and the Swarm can get the final shot here of the half. Comes in for Simmons. Down to three. Kobe Simmons working on Kasababu, has it blocked out of bounds. Strong defense there from Jonathan Kasababu. Nine tenths of a second on the clock. The lob for Welsh, knocked away by Kasababu, and that'll do it for the half. Strong start for Long Island. Greensboro creeped back into it late in that first quarter. And then Long Island taking control here in the second. And they have a 17-point lead as they head to the locker room, 65-48. to 48. Justin Anderson was the star early on. 13 points, a game high to go along with five assists. Long Island with four guys in double figures. Anderson, Claxton, Kennedy, and Musa. All with 10 or more in that first half to help Long Island build this 65-48 advantage. 12 points for Dwayne Bacon, the only member of the Swarm in double figures. Let's send it over a sideline where Matt is standing by with Long Island assistant coach Jimmy Oakman. Matt. Coach, a close game there in the first quarter, but you outscore them by 12. Seem to really get going there in the second. What was the difference, maybe second versus first quarter? I think it was just our overall energy defensively. I think we were kind of locked in, not giving them anything easy. Uh, I think they got a lot of offensive rebounds in that first quarter that kind of kept them into it. Uh, great job in the half quarter. We just got to finish possessions. Dwayne Bacon got a lot of pub coming into this game. Gets a lot of your attention. You hold him to 4 of 12 shooting, just 12 points. What's been your assessment on slowing him down? I think he's done a great job. I think uh, some of those 50-50 you know, plays over there, he's, he's tough. He's so hard to defend, so so strong. It doesn't look like a lot of contact, but he's able to take it and still get a shot off. So I think we've done a great job so far containing him. All right, like luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, the Nets lead at 65-48 here at NYCB Live as we head to halftime. First game back from the road trip so far. Pretty productive first half for the Long Island Nets. When we come back, we'll have our feature with the kids' dance team, also highlights, reaction, and box scores. That's coming your way when the halftime show gets going after this.
It is a 17 point lead for the Long Island Nets over the Greensboro Swarm here at halftime at the Coliseum. Let's get a look at some of the first half stats in Long Island just shooting the lights out in that first half match. 26 of 39 from the floor, 67 percent they made eight of 17 threes as well and they've been right around there all game just like you say Kevin haven't really missed a whole lot high percentage shots pretty much getting everything that they want on offense we also made a big deal out of the rebounding matchup with Long Island coming off a franchise record 72 rebounds so far Greensboro a team that doesn't rebound it all that well holding their own a bit seven blocks for Long Island and then the turnover battle doesn't really tell the whole story Long Island a team that turns it over a lot and Greensboro are a team that protects the ball. It's shaking out that way, but a big 17-point lead here for Long Island. Justin Anderson leading the way, 13 points. Nick Claxton has 12. John and Musa in double figures with 10 for Long Island. Dwayne Bacon, the only player for the Swarm in double figures. He has 12 to lead the way here at the half. A 17-point lead for Long Island at halftime. We'll be right back. We're at halftime here on Long Island with the Nets leading the Greensboro Swarm. The Long Island Nets, along with the NBA G League, continue to celebrate Black History Month. Last week, the Nets kids dance team got a behind the scenes tour of the African American Museum of Nassau County in Hempstead. The group got a first hand look at the exhibits, heard from featured speakers, and learned about Long Island's prominent role in the fight for civil rights. I tell them that this is the place of possibilities. What they're getting ready to enter and see is different possibilities, different dreams, different legacies, different heroes on the wall. And I want to instill that in the young people that their dreams and their goals and possibilities is all that they have. And that they can achieve anything when they look at Malcolm X, when they look at Martin Luther King, when they look at the Rosa Parks. It would not be possible without them being involved. They are the foundation of the future. Whatever they do, and whatever decisions that they make, will reflect on not only themselves and the whole uh, country. 
Anything is possible as long as you have a, a vision, as long as you have a dream, and as long as you have a goal, you can be anything in this world. And when you come into this museum, you will see that. I hope that they will be able to look at me and I say, I'll see in their mind, a person who lived through that, I said, traumatic time and I was able to survive. Whether we're black, whether we're white, whether we're Hispanic, they have paved the way and opened doors that we can achieve all types of goals. We've come a long way. Believe me, I know we've come a long way. A great opportunity for the kids to be educated about a vital time in our history. Halftime continues here at Nassau Coliseum. We're back after this timeout with first half highlights. The Long Island Nets shoot 67% in the opening half, and they have a 17-point lead here over the Greensboro Swarm. Kevin Dexter, Matt Estrich, Dale the Eagle back with you here at the Coliseum. And this is a good first half for Dale the Eagle. A lot of fun basketball from Long Island in that opening 24 minutes. Matt. Yeah, first quarter was kind of close, about a five-point lead for the Long Island Nets heading into the second, but they really took over there, Kevin, in the second quarter, outscoring Greensboro Swarm by 12 points, and they did it by shooting the lights out, but not without some re uh, resistance there from guys like Ty Odiasi. He's got eight points, some of them dramatic. Also, Kobe Simmons, the big the big scorer, one of the two big scorers, along with Dwayne Bacon for this Greensboro team. Odiasi with another one, but Devin Kennedy, he's got 10 points, including three of four from long range. Nicholas Claxton, recipient of that lob right there, a perfect five for five from the field. He's got 12.6 rebounds. And the other Mr. Perfect here in the first half is Justin Anderson, 13 points on five of five from the field. And like you said, Kevin, it has been an entertaining first half. A lot of high-flying theatrics here at the Coliseum. There have been a number. Jonathan Kasababu, Teodiasi off the lob from Joel Berry. 
Nicholas Claxton doing a nice job cutting in there off the feet from C.J. Williams. Terry Henderson provided probably the biggest one there on that cut. And uh, Nicholas Claxton once again for Long Island, 12 points, six rebounds for him in the opening half. Matt, the tools to the second half are brought to you by Costello's Ace Hardware, treating you like family since 1973. We talk about three-point shooting here. Greensboro allowing opponents to shoot a league-high 39% from three. So far, Long Island way better than that, 47% in the game. The rebounding uh, battle has been also in Long Island's favor, as you might expect. 26 rebounds for Long Island, 22 for Greensboro. But remember, the Nets coming off that historic game on Friday where they had 72 rebounds, a high in the G League this season. And also, Nick Claxton, part of our tools to the game, led the Nets in scoring off the bench in the win on Friday at Le uh, Lakeland. Tonight, uh, we heard his minutes might increase his impact in the game, and that has very much been the case. Nick Claxton, 12 points, six rebounds in 12 minutes, a perfect five for five from the field, and a perfect headache for head coach Joe Wolf in his second year at the helm of the Greensboro Swarm. Well, if you're Sean Fine, you have to be happy with the way Long Island moved the basketball in that first half. 15 assists on 26 made field goals. We talked about the shooting percentage, 67% from the floor for Long Island in the first half, and they make eight of 17 from downtown, good for 47%. Same starting five for Long Island, Anderson, Kurutz, Kasababu, Musa, and Martin. One change here for Greensboro is Joel Berry is in the place of Terry Henderson. He's joined by Simmons, Spalding, Welsh, and Bacon for the Swarm. We talked a little bit uh, about it going into halftime as John Musa almost comes up with a steal in an open lane at a hoop, but containing Dwayne Bacon there in the first half, he had 12 points on four of 12 shooting, got a couple points there towards the latter half of the second quarter, but the Nets certainly containing Bacon, a guy who is, again, averaging 45 points in his three games last week with the Greensboro Swarm. Not a misprint, 45-point game average for Greensboro. Three games of 51, 44, and 40 for Dwayne Bacon. Kobe Simmons called for his third personal foul. Musa off for Kasababu. Jonathan Kasababu going to the rim and he goes down hard on the foul from Ray Spaulding. Kasababu landing on his right hip there, it looked like. And coming up a little bit slowly as he'll take the trot to the free throw line. Understandable, Jonathan Kasababu, six foot eight, 240 pound frame. It's a lot of mass coming down on the court right there, but Kasababu, a tough guy, has a reputation as the energy guy in the starting lineup for these Long Island Nets. Maybe feeling some ill effects from that fall as he airballs the free throw. And he's gonna hear about it from John and Musa all the, all the way down the floor. Nothing like airballing a free throw and then having to hear about it as yeah. you walk down the uh, 94 feet down the other way, huh? Well, John and Musa is the chief in that department for <laughs> Long Island, always chirping on the court, whether it's somebody else or one of his teammates. <laughs> Bacon driving on Anderson. Goes up top for Berry. Joel Berry down the left side. He's fouled by Musa. If you're just tuning into the game here tonight, Justin Anderson played yesterday for Team USA in the FIBA Cup World Qualifiers. But he phoned in to the Brooklyn and Long Island coaching staff last night and said he absolutely wanted to play in this game and a big reason why is number zero on Greensboro, Dwayne Bacon. Justin Anderson said he wanted the assignment to cover Bacon to see if he could slow him down. And so far, Justin Anderson, both offensively and defensively, has been up to the task. First miss of the game there for Anderson. He was a perfect five of five from the floor in the first half. As Spalding will drive it on Kasababu. Ray Spalding got it deflected there by Jonathan Kasababu. And Musa up with a loose ball. John and Musa has it poked away by Berry and out of bounds 
last off the second year Brooklyn Net. Musa sensing the mismatch there, taking Joel Berry all the way to the cup, but watch that quick hands here from Berry get into position and swipe it away, and Musa was looking for a foul, but you can definitely see there as the ball was going up, Musa touched it last. Nice play there from Joel Berry. Kobe Simmons got his arm on Jeremiah Martin. The foul called on Martin. He wants Sean Fine to challenge it, but the Long Island coach not going to take the bait there. Will be the third personal on Jeremiah Martin. And Joel Berry is a familiar name to basketball fans, of course, at the University of North Carolina. Most outstanding player of the 2017 Final Four. Berry was the point guard of the team that won the national championship, Theo Pinson with the Brooklyn Nets, was a teammate of the Berries on that championship winning team for the Tar Heels. It was a pretty smooth first half. Had a lot of pace to it. It's been very disjointed here in the first minute and change of this third quarter. Some fouls, some turnovers. Just two points, both from Greensboro as they trail it by 15 here, 65-50 Long Island on top. Spalding will shoot it over Kurutz, leaves it short. Now Justin Anderson. Bouncing for Kurutz, he'll fire a three. Rodion's Kurutz buries the triple. Good to see Kurutz certainly not lacking in confidence. Had a couple of airballed three-pointers there in the second quarter, but makes his second triple of the game. Ray Spaulding, the answer on the other end for the Swarm. Spaulding, just a 15% three-point shooter on the season, knocking that one down confidently. He's two of two from three tonight. Kuroot's trying to answer right back, can't do so, but Musa, the offensive rebound. Inside for Kuroot's nice feed from Musa. Joel Berry with a ton of speed back the other way, the nifty reverse. It looked like Joel Berry was looking for someone to throw an outlet pass to, perhaps for an open three-pointer when there was no one there. Just laid it up over his head, a little English on the backboard, a pretty finish there by Berry. Anderson turns it over to Simmons. And Kobe Simmons finds Bacon in transition for three. Dwayne Bacon buries the triple, and Sean Fine wants a timeout. A 12-point lead for Long Island here early in the third at the Coliseum. Greensboro back within 12 here early in the third quarter. Long Island leads it 70 to 58. And the Nets, because they've played well recently, suddenly find themselves, Matt, back in the playoff race. They're just four games out of the sixth and final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. You see the standings, a lot of teams to jump over, but certainly possible to get there for Long Island if they can string together a little winning streak here at home. Well, the good news for the Nets, they got a couple winnable games coming up here on the schedule, taking on some bottom half of the Eastern Conference teams in Greensboro here right now. Two games against Erie in their next three, also a game against Raptors 905 on March 1st. Then it gets a little bit tougher with Delaware and Lakeland but a good opportunity for the Nets to start climbing over those teams in their way. And if they're going to play like this and if they have a roster like this, there's definitely a uh, 
some optimism to think that the Nets could do some damage and perhaps rattle off a bunch of games and climb up that Eastern Conference standing board. And we talked to Sean Fine about it pregame as Bacon gets inside and gives it up to Kuroots. He said it's not something that they hide from. He knows that it is a goal of the guys in the locker room to get back to the playoffs and have a chance to defend their Eastern Conference championship from a year ago. Of course, the only guy who really was a significant part of that team on the Nets bench or floor right now is John and Musa. Uh, Ishmael Sonogo as well on the bench right now has not uh, played yet tonight, but this is an entirely different team. Still want to get back to the playoffs here and as much as it is about development, that gives them a goal here for the final 15 games of the season to try to play well down the stretch and get themselves in to the playoff picture. Well, part of development is developing winners, developing right. guys that can play situational basketball. And like you said, Kevin, if you have you know a goal and something to aim for and something to shoot for, obviously it keeps things interesting when you know the season potentially could kind of hit the doldrums. But yeah, you want to you want your guys in a playoff race in a playoff chase. You know whether you're in the number four seed and you're looking for a home court advantage or if you're currently 10th in the Eastern Conference and you're trying to get to number six, it's something to play for, it's something to shoot for. And you know, right now the Nets are, are obviously with a lot of teams to jump over, but they're in pretty good shape when you consider the games coming up and the, uh, the current roster that they have right now, flush with guys that have played in some big games. And this current roster shooting the three ball extremely well tonight, now 11 of 23, nearly 50% and their lead at 18, Martin inside for Kasababu, the reverse lay-in, and a timeout taken by Joe Wolf. Greensboro got within 12, Long Island turned up the heat right back on the swarm, and their lead is 20, midway through the third. Wayne Bacon is the hottest guy in the G League, averaging 45 points per game over his last three. Long Island has done a really nice job on him defensively so far tonight, just five of 16 from the floor. He does have 15 points, but Long Island has really limited his efficiency, Matt. So many guys were eager to accept this defensive challenge. We talked about Justin Anderson specifically texting head coach Sean Fine last night at 1.30 in the morning saying, I want Bacon. And so far tonight, the Long Island Nets have been up to the challenge in calming down hot bacon, Mr. Dwayne Bacon, somebody that uh, has really turned uh, some heads here in the G League. He asked, again, we talked about it earlier tonight, he asked for this G League assignment. At first, he found some resistance from the Charlotte front office, but they eventually relented and allowed him to play here these last four games with the Swarm. And I'm guessing that's a decision they have not regretted because Dwayne Bacon has certainly found his groove once again here in the G League. Simmons, the lob for Spalding, puts it off the back of the rim, and Long Island has numbers the other way. Justin Anderson going right to it, and he's fouled by Bacon. That'll be the second foul on Dwayne Bacon, and Justin Anderson will go back to the free throw line. Anderson has had a great game in the scoring category thus far. He's been efficient, five of seven, three of five from three-point range, a team-high 13 points. But how about eight assists for Justin Anderson thus far, Matt? Might have to start some triple-double watch here from Justin Anderson. 17 points yesterday in Team USA's win over Puerto Rico in the FIBA America Cup qualifier. He played 
22 minutes in that game. And then back on the 20th, another win for USA over Puerto Rico in Puerto Rico that game. Justin Anderson, 11 points in 18 minutes. So seeing a good amount of action. He was a starter in both those games for Team USA. A roster composed mostly of guys from the G League, some of the more prominent players in the G League. Devin Kennedy leaves it three short. Kennedy three of six from downtown tonight. And a foul gonna be called on Nicholas Claxton down low, battling for position with Spalding. Sean Fine has to like what he's seen here, midway through the third quarter. The Nets maintaining big lead up by 22 at this point. Dante Ingram leaves the floater short. Kuroots, Claxton, Anderson, Kennedy, and Hands. The five on the floor here for Long Island. Claxton guarded by Bacon. And an offensive foul will be called on Kuroots. Dante Ingram just came flying into your picture there, pushed in the back by Rodion's Kuroots, offensive foul. Five on Kuroots now. He'll be replaced by C.J. Williams. And five fouls in just 15 minutes for Rodion's Kuroots. Kobe Simmons, the floater won't go. And Spalding fouls Claxton on the rebound. Greensboro shooting just 33% from the floor, 22 of 67 as a team. Talked about Long Island's defense on Bacon, but how about the defensive effort overall to hold the Swarm again to just 33%. It's been a standout overall. The first quarter was close. Only a five-point lead after one for Long Island. Greensboro hung with them pretty well. But the Nets really taking things over in the second, imposing their will, playing with the energy that, the, that they saw on Friday night in that impressive win on the road at Lakeland. That's the Long Island Nets team that Sean Fine and the coaching staff was hoping would show up here tonight. And so far in the second and midway through the third quarters, that's what they have seen. And just frustrating Greensboro. And that man in particular, Dwayne Bacon, who's had a tough go at his 15 points. He's had to earn every one of them here so far through his 27 minutes on the floor. Foul is called on Jalen Hands, his second and the team's fifth. So Bacon to the line here to shoot one for two. And he knocks it down, Dwayne Bacon up to 17 points. Last game on Saturday night for Greensboro, Bacon and Kobe Simmons combined for 70 points between the two of them. Tonight here in the third, just 24 points combined for Simmons and Bacon. So Long Island doing a good job of containing this two-headed monster for Greensboro. Anderson misses the three. This is a very different Greensboro team since the last time Long Island saw them. It was a 10-point win for the Nets back on the 11th of January, but since then, about three quarters of this Swarm team is different. Yeah, guys like Joe Chile, who just signed a 10-day contact with Charlotte two, uh, three days ago, I'm sorry. Chile had 30 points in that first meeting between the Nets and the Swarm, that game in Greensboro. Another guy, Jalen McDaniels, he was recalled by Charlotte on the 8th of February. Caleb Martin, who was fifth in the G League in points per game, he was recalled on February 8th. And Robert Franks was their two-way player to start the season. Another guy who had a big game against Long Island. He's now on the Stockton Kings. So some good players came through for Greensboro. Jalen hands in transition. Long Island's lead up to 25. Timeout taken by Joe Wolf. A 30-second timeout. Matt will keep it here. Uh, as you were saying, this Greensboro team much different in Long Island able to take advantage here in this third quarter now on a 17 to four run. Yeah, but just to reiterate, they scored 109 points, did Greensboro back on January 11th in the first meeting against the Long Island Nets. 
They only have 42 points of those 109 returning to the game here tonight. So 67 points missing from the floor from their first meeting. So a ton of turnover for the Greensboro Swarm. Now, of course, that is the goal to develop players here on the G League level and have them come up to the NBA. And obviously that's depleted Greensboro. Now, we mentioned the three-pointing prowess for the Long Island Nets. They shooting lights out here tonight. 10 or more threes made in 16 consecutive games Make now. It 17. And they are well on their way. Already achieved number 17 here. Devin Kennedy leading the team with 98 three-pointers made and 34.8% for Long Island on the road trip. So a team that feasts on an opportunity to shoot the long ball and they've been doing it well lately and that's continuing tonight against the Greensboro team that defends the three worse than anybody in the G League. Kuroots, Anderson, and Kennedy have all made three from downtown tonight. John and Musa, an offensive rebound off the miss from Williams. And Jalen Hands will reset. Fouled by Joel Berry on the drive. Will be the third personal on Berry. And Jalen Hands will shoot one for two. See the numbers on Jalen Hands there, just shy of 12 points per game this season, but he has seen his minutes decline as the year has gone on. Back in the month of December, Jalen Hands playing a high for a month, almost 29 minutes per game. Now contrast that with the seven games so far in February, only 15 minutes per game for Jalen Hands. Obviously signing two new two-way players who happen to be point guards has dipped into Jalen Hand's opportunity, but the rookie's still getting valuable experience here for Long Island. John and Musa from downtown. First three of the game for Musa. He's up to 15 points. Six nets are in double figures. Nobody has scored more than 15. They've really spread things out here to build this lead out to 30. Well, plenty of talent on the floor for Long Island, so a lot of places you can go to get some offense tonight. And as we've been mentioning it, it's they've been met with very little resistance from Greensboro on the offensive end tonight. And that's pretty much getting what they want when they want it. C.J. Williams, he'll drive it. Williams, high off glass, gets it to go. It also helps when you make circus shots like that. It's been that kind of night for Long Island continuing to shoot it at an extremely high percentage. They're on a 24 to six run to build this lead out to 30. Musa looking for more. John and Musa goes down off the defense there from Simmons. Now Claxton draws a double team out to Williams. CJ Williams inside for Claxton through the double team lays it in. Beautiful pass there, nice cut from Nick Claxton. And you said it, Kevin, two guards, two pesky guards swiping at that ball. You can see the strength there from Nick Claxton, able to get the ball up and in when he's being hounded by a couple of players. It's a beautiful offensive set there from Long Island when a possession pretty much broke down. Jalen hands off the window. Hands is up to eight, and the lead is 34. Long Island has outscored Greensboro 33-16 here in the third. Odiasi can't get the floater to go, and Long Island will hold for one. Hands pressured by Henderson. We'll get a screen from Claxton. Jalen Hands down to three to shoot, loses it off his foot. And Greensboro will have 8.1 on the clock here in the quarter. Kobe Simmons, kick out, Bacon blocked by Musa, and that'll do it for the quarter. 
John and Musa keeping up the defense for Long Island as they built a 34 point lead. Kasababu and Rodion's Kuroots have helped out offensively. Nets lead it big as we head to the fourth. The Nets lead it by 34 as we head to the start of the fourth quarter. Greensboro last in the Eastern Conference, a game that the Nets have to have. But head coach Sean Fine telling us he didn't want to stress the swarm struggles while preparing for this game. I don't think you, you address that. I mean, uh, like I said, I, I think it's about us right now. I think if we bring the intensity and we play the way that I know we can, then, then we're going to be successful. Now, if we, we revert back to you know some of the games that we've had, uh, where we don't bring that intensity, we're going to be in for a dogfight. Took a little bit to get going, but the Nets have certainly brought the intensity here today against Greensboro. Devin Kennedy starting off the fourth quarter, right where the Nets left off the third quarter, drilling a three-pointer. The Nets up to 101 points here at the start of the fourth. Now Long Island outscored Greensboro by five in the first, 32-27, but since then, 66-37. to and outscored them by 29 points in the second and third combined. And I didn't, that didn't even account for that three from Devin Kennedy. So make it 69 to 37 since the end of the first quarter. And the Nets lead right now at 37. Greensboro 0 and 20 this season when they trail at halftime and they're 0 and 8 when Kobe Simmons scores 15 points or fewer and Simmons being held to seven here at the start of the fourth quarter. Jonathan Casababu up to 13 points and seven rebounds. Now Simmons off for Odiasi inside, a tough finish for Tay Odiasi, who has given Greensboro some good minutes off the bench in this game. Yeah, he's definitely been one of the standouts here for Greensboro in what's going to be another lost night for the Swarm. Just one and six in the month of February is Greensboro. The only game they won was the game when Dwayne Bacon scored 51 points against Fort Wayne. Ahead of the pack, Dante Ingram lays it in. And Dwayne Bacon, 19 points in this game, which is a team high, but six of 22 from the floor and one of seven from three-point range. Long Island has really done an excellent job on him defensively as Terry Henderson makes it a 4-0 Greensboro spurt and Sean Fine 
wants a timeout. A 33-point lead for Long Island here early in the fourth quarter at the Coliseum. A 33-point lead for Long Island over Greensboro, 103 to 70. Early fourth quarter here at the Coliseum. If Long Island could hang on, which it looks like they will at this point, uh, to say the least. It would be six wins in their last eight games, heading into the final 14 of the season, and Long Island opening up uh, this homestand, Matt, a chance to really pile up the wins, playing six of the next seven, including tonight here at NYCB Live. And we mentioned earlier in the night when we spoke to Nets head coach Sean Fine in our usual pregame chat, we talked about the nice problem to have, which is to have so many guys on assignment from Brooklyn, John and Musa, Nick Claxton, Rodion's crew roots, and you know, Sean Fine admitted, yes, as a coach, you would love to have all these guys at your disposal, but it really is uh, something that he enjoys trying to make all those puzzle pieces fit, but just because you have a bunch of great players doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna play well together. But tonight was definitely one of those nights where it all worked out. Seemingly every move, every button that the Nets coaching staff has pushed tonight has worked. And you know, you'd expect it when you realize that Greensboro is a team that comes into this game reeling. But you also gotta take care of business because on any given night, everybody out here is a professional, which is what Coach Fine told us. So you know, by, uh, by no means, was this a game that Long Island was looking past, and it's a game that they've had to have, and they're in pretty good shape here, up by 33 with nine to play. Musa is fouled by Spalding on the drive, and John and Musa still giving that A effort here for Long Island, playing his sixth game of the season on assignment. As Rodion's Kurutz will return. And Sean Fine managing these assignment players, as you talked about trying to find minutes for all these guys is a challenge, but also in a game like this where they're up by 33 points, you'd like to you know, get some guys in the game who haven't played as much, but of course you want to give these assignment players like Musa and Kurutz the opportunity to play as much as possible and really get back into a rhythm to the point where they can help the NBA club. Yeah, it looks like Joe, Cremo, and Ish Sonogo, the two players available tonight that have uh, not gotten on the floor for Long Island. C.J. Massenberg, only uh, five minutes as he continues to work his way back from injury. But yeah, there's a lot of guys to go, uh, a lot of guys to go around, and not too many minutes for which uh, they can play. But that's you know un understandable in the G League, especially when when you're one of the guys towards the latter part of the bench. You know that on any night. Odiasi getting up to deny Kasababu. You know, on any night you could uh, expect to be a starter when you walk into the arena and then you find out that there's a guy from Brooklyn who's here. As Jonathan Kasababu finally gets that dunk that he's been searching for. You know, it's uh, like I was just saying, you know, reality of, of life in the G League. You can expect to play one minute and then realize that someone's on assignment from the NBA squad and you're not going to get any minutes that night. But again, a good problem to have is get another look at the block. Jonathan Kasababu as he kind of ended up a couple rows deep, which allowed him to sort of cherry pick as the Nets got the steal. And that led to this dunk, uncontested, 
for Kasababu, taking out some of those frustrations on the rim. And back to back double doubles now for Jonathan Kasababu. 15 points and 10 rebounds tonight. As Bacon's floater goes off glass, Dwayne Bacon up to 21. Now five double doubles on the season for Jonathan Kasababu. Justin Anderson back in the game. He's swatted by Spalding. Anderson wanted a goal 10 call, doesn't get it, and Bacon back the other way now has four straight. And Sean Fine yelling for the goaltend as well. Live action to me, Kevin, it looked clean. Claxton on the lob from hands. And that was available all night on Friday for Nick Claxton in the game against Lakeland. Jalen Hands doing it with his defense now ahead of the pack. And Hands having himself a nice second half here. He's up to 10 points, also four rebounds. He's got three assists, so doing a little bit of everything here for Jalen Hands. And it's a play like that that this Long Island coaching staff really wants to see out of Jalen Hands as Odiasi is fouled by Anderson. They want to see him be more committed on the defensive end, really uh, give that full effort every minute he's out there defensively, and you see the potential there, a clean pickpocket steal, and able to turn it into two points. Kind of recall back you know, last month I went to Brooklyn to interview John and Musa just to generally speak about his time last year playing the majority of the season in the G League with the Long Island Nets, and, and something that always kind of sticks with me is Musa saying that last season was the most important season in the development of his career. And I kind of think about a guy like Jalen Hands, who while you know he started out in the starting rotation for Long Island, then kind of saw his minutes wane, then he was back in the starting rotation, and now he's you know coming off the bench once again, where he, a guy who's obviously been a superstar everywhere he's played, you know, maybe looking at it now, might be frustrated and think that you know maybe this season at times was, was frustrating for him. I wonder if maybe this time next year he'll look back on this season the same way that John and Musa looked at his rookie season in the G League as you know, such an important one in his development and getting to where he wants to be. Rodion's Kuroots a straightaway three, his fourth of the night. 14 for Kuroots, and we talked about his struggles early shooting the three, was one of four, but now has made three of his last four from downtown. And shooting here tonight at that same clip that he's shooting it at the NBA level that we talked about. Here's Anderson for another two and a timeout taken by Greensboro. Long Island pouring it on. They lead it by 40, 52 to play here at the Coliseum. Sixteen to seventy-six. Take a look at the Long Island Nets upcoming game schedule. Take on Erie here at home on Thursday. Then Raptors nine oh five will be on NBA TV for that one on Sunday afternoon, a three o'clock start. So you can check us out on national TV if you're so inclined. We hope you join us for that one. And then Long Island, a quick road trip to Erie before another three-game homestand against Delaware, Lakeland, and the same Greensboro Swarm team in about a week and a half. Nets on pace to potentially make 
some runs at a couple season highs here. I'm looking at field goal percentage. Prior to that miss by Nick Claxton, the Nets were shooting it at a uh, very high 64% clip. Just for some context, previous high field goal percentage game for Long Island, 58% in a game on the road at Canton back in November. So if the Nets keep shooting at this pace, it'll be their top shooting performance of the season. They've shot it well from three as well, 15 of 33 from downtown. Yeah, 45% from three. That would also be a season high. Previous high was 41% in the game uh, at Greensboro. Not coincidental, as we mentioned earlier. Greensboro allows the second most made three-pointers in the G League and the lowest or the worst percentage-wise defensively. They allow teams to shoot about 39% from three-point range on the season. And Long Island rebounding it well yet again, 56-35. They lead the rebounding battle after that franchise record 72 rebound performance on Friday night down in Lakeland. Turnaround jumper good from John Dawson, who's checked in for the first time. Dawson in the game along with DiMaggio Wiggins, wearing number seven. First time they have seen action for the Swarm tonight. And Long Island's little used guy is going to get up off the bench here as well. Joe Cremo, C.J. Massenberg, and Ishmael Sonogo. And a well-deserved hand here for Claxton and Devin Kennedy as they check out of the game. There's Sonogo not quite yet as he's going to get Rodion's Kurutz after this free throw. Nets have played some pretty good defense here in their two games since the All-Star break, holding Lakeland to 84 points on the road on Friday night. And here, Greensboro with 78 at the four and a half minute mark. Kasababu able to take it away from Perkins. Now Cremo for Jalen Hands, who's had a nice second half, though he loses it to Wiggins. DiMaggio Wiggins draws a foul on Kurutz. That'll be his sixth. He was coming out anyway, but now <laughs> has no choice. <laughs> no choice, that's right. Now Kurutz fouls out in 20 minutes, 14 points, six rebounds, five of nine from the floor, four of eight from three-point range, and after the way he struggled to shoot it early in this game, you have to be pleased to see him get back, uh, as I said a couple of minutes ago, to that same clip that he's been shooting at this season at the NBA level. Yeah, it just didn't seem quite right in warm-ups, and that kind of carried over to the first and second quarter where he had a couple misses from three, two in a row that were air balls, but, you know, shooter is going to keep on shooting, and obviously he's here to work on that and work on finding his touch and getting comfortable, and like you said, Kevin, good to see, you know, Early struggles not carrying over there for Rodion's crew. Certainly a very respectable four of eight from long range here in the game today. Should mention he was also banged up a bit there in, in the first quarter. And good to see Rodion's crew. It's no worse for the wear here as he's played plenty of minutes throughout the night. Brooklyn assigning Kurutz, Musa, and Claxton tonight despite having a game of their own. They're playing Orlando as we speak at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Are we racing really each other for a score update <laughs> on our Well, really the first so. time we've <laughs> seen uh, Brooklyn with a 19-point lead right now early in the third quarter, 67 to 48. But uh, what I was going to say is really the first time we've seen three guys on assignment on a night that Brooklyn is playing. A lot of times that We've seen these guys come here to the G League to get minutes is on an off night for the Nets, or maybe they're on a road trip. Um, but Brooklyn prioritizing the development and these guys getting minutes here in the G League as opposed to being on the bench with the big club tonight. And the Nets are heading on the road after this one. Brooklyn, I should say, is heading on the road. They'll be in D.C. to take on the Wizards on Wednesday night and then in Atlanta on Friday night to play the Hawks. That is the first of a back-to-back. -back. On Saturday, they'll play the Heat in Miami. Um, so we'll see if these guys head on that road trip with Brooklyn. Do they remain here in the G League? Will be a couple of practice days for Long Island before their next in action here at home on Thursday against Erie. 
It seems like Brooklyn has really tightened up the rotation at this point in the season. We spoke earlier about how Nicholas Claxton, he hasn't played a game in the NBA since way back on January 26th. So like you said, Kevin, even though there is a game in Brooklyn tonight and perhaps they could use a couple more bodies, it was determined that it was more useful for those guys like uh, Kurutz, Musa, and Claxton to be here uh, getting consistent play with the Long Island team in the G League. Should mention Chris Chioza, the other two-way player for Long Island, along with Jeremiah Martin, is up with Brooklyn. So he is there uh, in case he's needed tonight and is expected to be there for yeah. uh, the foreseeable future from what we're told, thanks to the season-ending shoulder surgery that Kyrie Irving is set to undergo. So Brooklyn, of course, needing that extra point guard on the roster, and that's part of the reason why they signed Chris Chioza and Jeremiah Martin to two-way deals in January as Massenburg draws a foul here and will head to the free throw line. Yeah, the original two ways for Long Island to start the season were a couple of bigger guys, obviously Henry Ellenson and then Timote Luawu Cabarro, who has been quite the success story this season for this Long Island and Brooklyn organization, getting his start here at the G League level and certainly proving that the Nets have a knack for finding those, I don't want to say diamonds in the rough, but guys who were, you know, highly sought after, maybe first round draft picks who've kind of fallen out of favor for whatever reason with their original organization, kind of get scooped up by the Nets, resurrected, and Timotei yeah. Luawu Kabaro the other night, leading scorer for the yeah. Brooklyn Nets in their game on the road against Charlotte. Yeah, they're hoping he follows the same path of Spencer Dinwiddie and Joe Harris, guys who were both second round picks. We're in the G League. Spencer Dinwiddie, I remember calling a game against the Long Island Nets when he played for the Windy City Bulls the first year of the Long Island existence. It was only about you know, 10 games into the season that Brooklyn uh, scooped up Spencer Dinwiddie, and obviously he has become a star with the big club since then as Jalen hands with a steal and going to show off Long Island back in front by 40. To the delight of the crowd, and it is a good Monday night crowd here at NYCB Live. They love to see that one, particularly about four or five kids who are directly under the basket. They have this angle at it, that look at Jalen Hands. They're standing right behind the camera guy. They loved it too. And Jalen Hands putting the punctuation, the exclamation point on a good night for him. He's up to 12 points on five of seven shooting and just an excellent night all around for these Long Island Nets who again lead it by 40 here in the fourth quarter holding Greensboro to just 80 points. Well, I wanted to ask, I didn't want to put you on the spot or not, but what was your impression of Spencer Dinwiddie at the time when he played with Windy City? I know it was a couple of years ago. Did he uh, stand out as he uh, does quite often in the NBA? I don't remember much okay, that's from fine. that game. Understandable. I do remember him playing, again, for the Windy City Bulls, and I'll have to look back at the exact date of that game yeah, and sure. come back at you with it on Thursday. Uh, but I do remember it was early on in the season that year, um, Brooklyn, we're going back only four years, but it feels sure. like a lifetime ago, <laughs> Brooklyn had Jeremy Lin, who had gotten hurt very early on in that season, and uh, Lo uh, Long Island, this was before the two-way contract, yeah. had Yogi Ferrell, mm -hmm. who is now with the Sacramento Kings. Uh, in the G League, Brooklyn called him up before they called up Spencer Dinwiddie from Windy City. Uh, Yogi played, a, a, I think, 10 or 11 games with Brooklyn that season before the Nets made the decision to cut Yogi Ferrell. He came back to Long Island in the G League before he got a call up from the Dallas Mavericks and ended up having an extremely successful rookie season. But uh, they then went and found Spencer Dinwiddie, who at the time, again, was playing for Windy City. And really, the rest is history. Sure. And that's really, I, I think, what gives a lot of these guys, as we look at them on the floor here, guys like C.J. Massenberg, as Kasababu tipped that one in and it's going to be uh, waved off as it was above the cylinder. But any guy here on a G League contract with Long Island, it gives them hope that they can be the next guy who goes from this G League program to the NBA, whether it's with Brooklyn or another NBA team. A minute to play, C.J. Massenberg 
Kicks out Sonogo for three. Ishmael Sonogo getting on the scoreboard. Fifty-five point six on the clock in Long Island. Closing in on the second extremely convincing win in the last month here at the Coliseum. You look back at January 22nd, they beat South Bay by 35 that night. 143 to 108. And Long Island closing in on a bigger win than that. That was their largest margin of victory in franchise history. This one will be if they can hang on to this margin at this point. It is 39. As Perkins misses the jumper, about a two second difference between shot and game clock in Long Island, just gonna take the clock down. Nobody scores 20 points for Long Island in this game, but they put seven different players in double figures, really spread around the scoring. 19 from Claxton, 17 each from Musa and Anderson. 15 for Kasababu, 14 for Kuroots as they take the shot clock violation. 13 for Kennedy, 12 for Hands. Just an excellent job of showing the depth of this Long Island team with the three guys on assignment. Comes into Perkins. Three at the horn from Odiasi is short and that'll do it. Long Island wins their second straight and for the sixth time in their last eight games, your final score, 123 to 84. Again, the largest margin of victory in franchise history, 39 points for Long Island, passing that game uh, against South Bay that I was just talking about back on the 22nd of January in Long Island, continuing to play their best basketball of the season. Really since that homestand in the middle of January, they've carried it through the road trip and now pick it back up on another homestand here with a 39 point win to start it off against the Swarm. Let's send it sideline where Matt is standing by with the star of the game, it's Long Island's Justin Anderson. All right, Justin, you were playing for Team USA yesterday. Now, head coach Sean Fine told us that before the game, you sent him a text message and said, I gotta play here Monday night at the Coliseum against Greensboro. Why did you, why were you so itching to get out on the floor? Well, obviously, um, you know, they have a guy in Bacon who's a terrific player. Um, I wanted to step up and take the challenge. I, I was seeing that he was scoring at a, at a very hot clip. Um, so I wanted to take that challenge defensively and get back here with my team. Um, after the USA game, I looked at it as a back-to-back. We've, done, we've all done it before as professionals. Um, so last night I just got some rest and uh, got on a plane this morning, got here midday, took a nap, and uh, tried to get ready to play. And I think we did a great job uh, sealing this game. Yeah, a game like this where all facets were working for your team, is this kind of the potential that when you look at this roster, like, man, this is how we should be playing kind of every night? Yeah, I mean, you obviously want Nick Laxton to be up. You want Musa and Rody to be up and be playing with the Nets. But selfishly, I love when they <laughs> – when they're down here with us, when we're trying to make a playoff push, we're gonna do something, or we're gonna put our we're gonna put our best foot forward to do something that's very unthinkable. We're trying to make a playoff push, and um, we're we're pretty far behind right now. But uh, we're gonna keep two feet on each step, and we're gonna give ourselves a chance. And I think we can do it. Appreciate it. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. All right, Justin Anderson, who, like we said, just 24 hours ago was playing for Team USA in the FIBA World America Cup, qualifying at 11 points on Thursday against Puerto Rico, 17 points in a 95-73 win against Puerto Rico just yesterday. The next qualifying phase for that tournament isn't until November, so Justin Anderson, barring him getting, uh, catching on with another team, he's gonna stick around here with the Long Island Nets, and I'm sure they'd love to have him as long as possible. Kevin, back over to you. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Justin Anderson, one of two Long Island Nets with double-doubles tonight. 17 points, 10 assists for Anderson, 15 points, 13 rebounds for Jonathan Casababu. Long Island shoots it a franchise or a season high, and uh, we should check on that. It might be a franchise record. 62% from the floor. They out-rebound Greensboro 64 to 41. Do turn it over 21 times. We know Sean Fine not going to be happy about that one, but I'm sure he is very pleased with a 39-point win 
to say the least, as Long Island puts seven different players in double figures, four of them in the starting lineup. You see Anderson and Musa with 17 apiece. We talked about the double-double from Jonathan Casababu and 14 on four three-pointers for Rodion's crew roots. Nicholas Claxton, a game high, or team high, I should say, 19 points and seven rebounds. Devin Kennedy, Jalen Hands also in double figures for Long Island, and Dwayne Bacon leading the way for Greensboro with 23. So Long Island has now won six out of eight overall. They've won two in a row, following up a big win in Lakeland on Friday with a 39-point victory here at home over the Greensboro Swarm to open up this three-game homestand. Long Island next in action.